How to Avoid a Climate Disaster by Bill Gates Adapting to a Warmer World Climate change is already affecting people worldwide. We need to adapt to a warmer world and rethink our infrastructure. Low-income families and smallholder farmers are most vulnerable. In Kenya, for example, farmers are learning how to raise healthier and more productive livestock to adapt to climate change. According to the United Nations Development Program, climate change could push over 100 million people into extreme poverty by 2030. We need to act now to help those most affected. The Impact of Climate Change on Smallholder Farmers Smallholder farmers are responsible for few greenhouse gas emissions. But as they earn more income, they invest in high-value assets, including animals that contribute to climate change. The cruel injustice is that the poor will suffer the most from climate change. Droughts and floods will wipe out harvests, and livestock will produce less meat and milk. The growing season will get shorter, and crop-eating pests will infest more acreage. Food will become more expensive for those who can least afford it. A child born in Chad is 50 times more likely to die before her fifth birthday than a child born in Finland. With growing food scarcity, more kids won't get all the nutrients they need, weakening their body's natural defenses. The number of additional heat-related deaths could approach 10 million a year by the end of the century. With a large majority of the deaths occurring in poor countries. Climate change and health. Climate change will have a devastating impact on the health and nutrition of the world's poorest people. We need to take action to help them. The first step is to improve primary health care systems and continue providing vaccines for diseases like diarrhea and pneumonia. Gavi has prevented 13 million deaths since 2000, and we need to accelerate this progress. We also need to ensure that fewer children are malnourished in the first place. We can help poor farmers grow more food and prepare for droughts and floods. Some suggest taking away vaccine funding to make aid budgets climate sensitive. But Africa is responsible for only 2% of global emissions, and we need to focus on adaptation and improving health. Gyre, Creating Better Plants and Animal Genetics CHIAR is the world's largest agricultural research group, creating better plants and animal genetics to ensure families have nutritious food to eat. CGIAR's work has helped reduce poverty and improve nutrition around the world. Their research on drought-tolerant maize, for example, has been life-changing for many families in sub-Saharan Africa. Farmers in drought-stricken areas who use drought-tolerant maize were able to harvest up to 600 more kilograms of maize per hectare than farmers who used conventional varieties. That's enough to feed a family of six for nine months. Gyre-affiliated experts have also developed other maize varieties that resist diseases, pests, or weeds, raise crop yields by up to 30%, and help fight malnutrition. It's fascinating how Gyre is creating new seeds like scuba rice that can survive underwater for two weeks. Gyre's research generates about $6 in benefits for every dollar invested. That's a significant return on investment that can save lives and help smallholder farmers increase their crop yields. Adapting to Climate Climate change is a reality we can't ignore. Adapting to a warmer climate is critical to our survival. To adapt, we need to reduce the risks posed by climate change. Climate-proofing buildings and protecting wetlands are some of the steps we must take. Preparing for emergencies is also crucial. We need to improve weather forecasts and have well-equipped first responders. Cities need to change the way they grow. Urban areas are responsible for more than three-quarters of the world's economy. Coastal cities will be the most affected. 
hundreds of millions of people could be forced from their homes as sea levels rise. Climate-proofing cities means having the latest data on climate risks and projections. City planners can then make better decisions on how to prepare for climate change. Building a more expensive bridge once is better than building a cheaper bridge twice. It's important to make smart choices when planning for climate change. Addressing the urgency of climate change Cities with extremely hot days and residents who can't afford air conditioning will need cooling centers. This is why advances in cooling technology are so important. Restoring ecosystems has a huge payoff. Water utilities in the world's largest cities could save $890 million a year by restoring forests and watersheds. Planting mangroves is a great investment. Mangroves help the world avoid some $80 billion a year in losses from floods and improve water quality. Most of the world's megacities already face severe water shortages. We need practical steps to drive demand down and supply up. Innovative solutions like just-in-time irrigation can reduce water use while raising farmers' yields. We need to invest in such solutions and spread awareness about the importance of water conservation. Funding Climate Adaptation Projects Climate change poses a significant risk to our world, and we need to act fast to adapt. But, the costs of adaptation may not be recouped for years down the road, making it unattractive to private investors. Governments and companies must screen their projects for climate risks and price them accordingly. By investing in climate-resilient infrastructure, raising crop yields, managing water, and protecting mangroves, we can mitigate the risks of climate change. Investing $1.8 trillion between 2020 and 2030 in adaptation projects would return more than $7 trillion in benefits. This investment is about 0.2% of the world's GDP, with a nearly fourfold return on investment. The benefits of adaptation projects are immeasurable. They include avoiding civil wars over water rights, preventing droughts and floods, and protecting cities from hurricanes. The case for geoengineering Geoengineering is a tool that could buy us time to get our act together. It involves making temporary changes to the Earth's oceans or atmosphere to lower the planet's temperature. One approach involves distributing fine particles in the upper layers of the atmosphere to scatter sunlight and cause cooling. This has been observed during volcanic eruptions. Another approach involves brightening clouds to scatter more sunlight and cool the earth. This could be done with a salt spray. Geoengineering is relatively cheap and has minimal long-term impacts. But we need to better understand its potential impact at a local level before considering testing it at scale. It's important to consider all options to address climate change, including worst-case scenarios. Geoengineering is a tool that deserves more study and debate.